Dear brothers and sisters, God bless you. Let's start by having a word of prayer as we go into the word and the message that the Lord has for us today. Gracious Father, we are praying that you will breathe the breath of life upon these sacred words. And we're praying that you give us grace to see, ears to hear, and a heart to perceive your message at this time in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, most of all, we pray that you grant us the grace to be able to live in the light of the word that we shall receive today in the name of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' holy name we pray, amen. Can we travel down to the book of Matthew, please? The Gospel of Matthew, chapter 13. We're going to anchor the message today on two verses, verses 24 and 25 of Matthew 13. It says, another parable put he forth unto them, saying, the kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man which soweth good seed in his field. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and went his way. The message the Lord has for us today is titled, While Men Slept. While men slept. The enemy is always looking for the moment of vulnerability. He's looking for a time when the people of God are vulnerable, when the people of God aren't aware, when the people of God do not know and are not sensitive of what's going on around them. That's the way the devil works. He's looking for a time when people are sleeping spiritually. He's looking for an opening to attack looking for an opening to send forth his venom and to attack and to affect the people of God. So he's always looking for a time when people are sleeping. Remember the case of that man, Caesarea. And remember there was a battle that was going on and he ran for safety and he went to hide himself in a tent. And during the battle, we're told he went to sleep for a while. And then a woman came while he was sleeping. You know, when somebody sleeps, the enemy can activate and trigger his attack. At a time when a person is sleeping, they're not aware of what's going on around them. And therefore, they are not able to use the power, the might, and the ability to have victory because they are sleeping. And this man was sleeping, and the woman came up, took a hammer, took a nail, and put it through his head without any resistance. That's why the devil is always looking for when God's people are sleeping. I pray you will not sleep a spiritual sleep in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. God forbid, especially not in these days with all the evil going on, with all the wickedness that is going on, with all the attacks that we see, with all the devilish diabolical legislations that we hear about, with all that the enemy is doing against God's people, I pray that we will not be sleeping spiritually in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Remember something in the Bible, Delilah got him to sleep. This is a man that a thousand people cannot stop him. This is a man that the enemy could not stop him. This is a man that the Philistines were afraid of. This is a man that will carry the gate of the city. This is a man that nobody, no army could stop him. But Delilah was very cunning and she got Samson to sleep. And as he was sleeping, the enemy came, took off the hair on his head and the rest is history. My prayer is that we will not sleep. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 13 and in verse 25, but while men slept, so the enemy was waiting for them to sleep and then to come in and sow the tears among the wheat. He was waiting for the time. He was very, very um, strategic about it. He said, no, don't go right now. They are revived. They are awakened. Don't go right now. They are, they are sensitive. Let us wait for a time when they are sleeping. The Bible says, 
that something slept. And when there's a person sleeping, there's always a suspension of consciousness. I pray that the suspension of spiritual consciousness will never happen in our lives in Jesus' name. What does it mean when there's a suspension of spiritual consciousness? Or, in other words, when somebody is sleeping spiritually. Number one, spiritually unconsciousness of what is at stake is what happens when someone is sleeping. They are spiritually unconscious of what is at stake. That means that individual has gone to a state of sleeping. They are spiritually unconscious of eternity. Look at the case of a man called Noah in his days. The people around him were asleep. They were spiritually unconscious at what was at stake. Doom, damnation, judgment was coming, but they didn't know. They were spiritually unconscious. It's an example of when people are sleeping. Judgment was coming, they were sleeping. He was building the ark, but they were sleeping. The doom that was going to come upon the whole world, but they were sleeping. They were given in marriage, they were eating, they were drinking, they were planting, they were sowing, they were harvesting. Life was going on, but they were not aware that very imminent was the judgment of God that was to come upon the entire world. What happened to them? They were sleeping. How about Lot? Same thing with Lot also. And the Lord, but told, had to talk to his son-in-laws. He said, look, there's judgment coming. Let's escape from Sodom and Gomorrah. But the people were sleeping. So number one, when a person sleeps, it simply means that they're spiritually unconscious of what is at stake. Eternity is at stake. The narrow way is at stake. Making sure we don't miss the rapture is at stake. Making sure that the enemy does not tamper with our spiritual life is at stake. But when somebody is sleeping spiritually, they become spiritually unconscious of what is at stake. So the in-laws of Lot, they didn't know what was at stake. They laughed and they mocked and they jest against um, a man called Lot. And as a result of that, they were they left in the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah. In Luke chapter 17, verse 28, Luke chapter 17, and in verse 28, we're told, Likewise also, as it was in the days of Lot, they did eat, they drank, they bought, they sold, they planted, they builded. But the same day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. All. You know what it says here? They were sleeping. While men slept, destruction came upon Sodom and Gomorrah because they were not conscious of what was at stake. So when we talk about the suspension of spiritual consciousness, it means, number one, they are spiritually unconscious of what is at stake. Number two, spiritually unconscious of the grave consequences of sin. When you come around people who don't understand the grave consequences of sin, it means they've gone to sleep. When you don't understand how exceedingly sinful sin is, they have gone to sleep. When they don't understand the calamity and catastrophe that, they, that sin will bring into their life and they're not aware of that, that means they have gone to sleep. When they don't understand how sin will open judgment and how sin will bring oppression into their lives, it means they have gone to sleep. When there's levity with the subject of sin and they make jest and light of it, such people have gone to sleep. And the Bible says, while men slept, 
the enemy came and sowed tears amongst the wheat. In Proverbs chapter 14 and in verse number 9, Proverbs chapter 14 and in verse number 9, we see what scripture says. Proverbs 14 and in verse 9, fools make him mock at sin. Some people sit down to be entertained by sin. Fools make him mock at sin. But among the righteous, there is favor. So people become spiritually unconscious when they do not understand the grave consequences of sin. Spiritually unconscious of the grave consequences of sin means those people are actually sleeping. And while men slept, the enemy came. In 1 Corinthians chapter 5, I'll read some select verses here. This happened in the church at Corinth where they had gone to sleep. I pray you will not sleep spiritually. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, you will be alert. By the grace of God, you will be spiritually sensitive. By the grace of God, you will not be dull of hearing. By the grace of God, the enemy will not quench your light in the name of Jesus Christ. Your holy convictions will remain as they ever were before in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You will not sleep the sleep of spiritual unconsciousness in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. It happened to a church at Corinth in 1 Corinthians chapter 5. I read verses 1 and 2 first of all. It is reported commonly that there is fornication among you, and such fornication as is not so much as named among the Gentiles, that one should have his father's wife. And ye are puffed up, and have not rather mourned. You know why they didn't mourn about that sin? They had gone to sleep. That he that had done this deed might be taken away from among you. Verses 6 to 8. Your glorying is not good. Know ye not that a little leaven leaveneth the whole lump? Purge out therefore the old leaven. Don't sleep. Don't sleep. Don't allow the sin to come in. Don't ignore the grave consequences of sin. It says, purge out therefore the old leaven that ye may be a new lump, as ye are unleavened. For even Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore let us keep the feast, not with old leaven, neither with the leaven of malice and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Simply put, he's saying, do not sleep spiritually. Spiritually unconscious, of the grave consequences of sin means that person is sleeping. Number three, when someone is spiritually unconscious of the subtlety of the devil, the subtlety of the devil, when they are unconscious about that subtlety, then it means they've gone to sleep. Satan is very, very subtle. We're told in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, and he will not get you unawares. Come on, church. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, he wouldn't get you. He wouldn't get your family. He will not get your children. He will not get you unawares in the name of Jesus Christ. You will not fall for the subtlety of the wicked one in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You will not be spiritually unconscious for you not to be alert and aware of the subtlety of the devil. In 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 3 and 4, But I fear, lest by any means, as the serpent beguiled Eve through the subtlety, do you see that? So your minds should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. You know, the moment Eve began to discuss with the serpent and began to doubt what God has said and began to change her convictions about that tree that was forbidden, at that moment, she began to sleep. 
And because she began to sleep, she was spiritually unconscious of the subtlety of the devil. That the devil is very subtle and it comes in different ways and forms. I pray that you will not be found sleeping spiritually and therefore you will not be vulnerable to the devil in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We're told in verse number four, for if he that cometh preacheth another Jesus, whom we have not preached, or if ye receive another spirit, which you have not received, or another gospel, which you have not accepted, you might well bear with him. Do you listen to that? Did you get what he's saying here? He says here, the subtlety of the devil, when he gets people who are sleeping, what does he do? He preaches another Jesus, not the Jesus of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. No, he preaches another Jesus, not the Jesus of the Bible, not the Jesus of Nazareth, not the Jesus of Scripture, not the Jesus of the epistles. He preaches another Jesus. That's the subtlety of the devil, and he does that when people are sleeping. And because of that, they receive a different spirit, not the Holy Spirit, a different spirit. Not only that, they now listen to another gospel. So when people are sleeping, Satan comes in and he brings his subtlety. And to sleep means to be spiritually unconscious of the subtlety of the devil. I pray the Lord God in heaven will keep you away from that subtlety in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In Mark chapter 13, Mark's gospel chapter 13, I read from verse 33. Mark's gospel 13, and I read from verse 33. Mark 13, 33. I'm reading it to verse 37. Take ye heed, watch and pray. Don't be caught napping or sleeping because of the subtlety of the wicked one. Watch and pray, we're told, for you know not when the time is. For the Son of Man is as a man taking a far journey who left his house and gave authority to his servants and to every man his work, and commanded the porter to watch. Watch ye therefore, for ye know not when the master of the house cometh, at evening, or at midnight, or at cock crowing, or in the morning. Lest come in suddenly, he find you sleeping, and what I say unto you, I say unto all, watch. And what is God saying here? Watch out for the subtlety of the wicked one. So when people sleep, as the Bible tells us in Matthew 13, 25, they're spiritually unconscious, number one, of what is at stake. They're spiritually unconscious, number two, of the grave consequences of sin. They're spiritually unconscious, number three, of the subtlety of the devil. And number four, they're spiritually unconscious of the weapon of warfare. When people are spiritually unconscious of the weapon of warfare, then you know that they have gone to sleep. In Luke chapter 18, Luke chapter 18, and in verse number one, Luke 18, one. And he spake a parable unto them to this end, that men ought always to pray. That's how you not be found napping. Always to pray. Always interceding. Always petitioning the Lord. Always supplicating. Always approaching the throne of grace. Christ says here, he spake a parable unto them. To this end, that men ought always to pray and not to faint. 
Christ understood spiritual warfare. Christ understood the enemy. Christ understood the venom of the wicked one. Christ understood the diabolical powers. Christ understood the diabolical beings. Christ understood the wickedness in high places. Christ understood the serpents and scorpions all around. Christ understood the venom, the vengeance, the anger of the wicked one and the cohorts of hell. That's the reason why Christ told his disciples, men ought always to pray and not to faint. And when people don't pray, when people are spiritually unconscious of the weapon of warfare, it means they're sleeping. Christ said in Luke chapter 18, verse 1, once again, and he speak a parable unto them to this end, that men ought always to pray, always to pray. You pray for your life. You pray for your children, you pray for your family, you pray for your husband, you pray for your wife, you pray for the works of your hands, you pray for your enterprise, you pray for your ministry, you pray for what God has given you to do, you pray for your, your career, you pray for your destiny. Men ought always to pray and not to faint. Don't let any aspect or any area of your life become vulnerable to the enemy. You pray for your husband, you pray for your wife, you pray for your family. You pray for your wealth. You pray for your success. You pray at the time when there's been failure that God will bring you out. You pray when you're depressed. You pray when there's affliction. You pray when there's bodily challenges, when there's an infirmity. Men ought always to pray and not to faint. When the enemy comes, we pray. There's a Red Sea, we pray. There's a tempestuous wind, we pray. There's a wicked one, we pray. We're dropped in the midst of enemies, we pray. The alliance there against us, we pray. The wall of Jericho is there we pray. Jezebel is threatening, we pray. Christ said men ought always to pray. That's how we're not going to sleep. Men ought always to pray and not to faint. It seems as if the children are going a different way, we pray. It seems as if their convictions are changing, we pray. It seems as if the enemy is ganging against us where we work, we pray. It seems as if there's something within the body and the medical people are saying something negative, we pray. Men ought always to pray and not to faint because when people sleep, they are spiritually unconscious of the weapon of warfare. Christ said men ought always to pray and not to faint. You know why he said that? Because the devil cannot handle prayer. Demons cannot handle prayer. Powers of darkness cannot handle prayer. Witches cannot handle prayer. I said the serpents and scorpions and the princes of the power of the air, they cannot handle prayer. But when people sleep, they become spiritually unconscious of the weapon of warfare. In Luke chapter 22, verses 40 to 46. Luke 22 from verse 40 to 46. And when he was at the place, he said unto them, Pray that ye enter not into temptation. And he was withdrawn from them about a stone's cast, and kneeled down and prayed, saying, Father, if thou be willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. And the Bible tells us here, hallelujah, and they appeared an angel unto him from heaven, strengthening him. That's why we pray. That's why we don't sleep. Because when we pray, then we get strength from above, divine enabling and empowering from above. And they appeared an angel unto him from heaven, strengthening him. The Bible says, let me just quickly go to verse 46. It says, 45 and 46, and when he rose up from prayer and was come to the disciples, he found them sleeping. There was a warfare going on. There was a battle going on. The hordes of hell were encircling Jesus Christ at that time, but they were sleeping. I pray you wouldn't sleep at the time of warfare in the name of Jesus Christ. People who sleep at that time, it can cost them dearly. It can cost them their home. It can cost them their marriage. It can cost them their children. It can cost them their health. It can cost them their wealth. It can cost them their career. I pray you wouldn't be sleeping in the name 
of the Lord Jesus Christ when you need to be alert. The Bible says in verse 46, and said unto them, why sleep ye? Rise and pray, lest ye enter into temptation. The Bible says very clearly that we should not be sleeping. Remember, to sleep spiritually means suspension of spiritual consciousness. Number one, spiritually unconscious of what is at stake, which is eternity. Number two, spiritually unconscious of the grave consequences of sin. Sin has great, grave consequences. Number three, spiritually unconscious of the subtlety, of the craftiness of the devil. And number four, spiritually unconscious of the weapon of warfare. That's why scripture says as we end in Romans chapter 13 and in verse 11. Romans chapter 13 and in verse 11. A word of admonition to God's people. It says, and that knowing the time that now it is high time to awake out of sleep. This is the time to awake out of sleep, the time to be alert, the time to be sensitive, the time to be awake, the time not to be spiritually unconscious about what is at stake and about the grave consequences of sin and about the subtlety of the devil and the weapon of warfare. It's time to awake out of sleep that will not become vulnerable to the enemy and there's no opening for him to get advantage of us, it's time to awake out of sleep. For now is our salvation nearer than when we believed. The Bible says, while men slept, the enemy came and sowed tears among the wheat. When he comes to check you out, to size you out, you will not be sleeping in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. God in heaven will grant you the grace to remain vigilant, to remain alert, and to never, ever, ever be vulnerable to the devil in the name of Jesus Christ. May the Lord bless his words in Jesus' name. God bless you.